I drifted in darkness, blind and deaf to anything but the constant gnawing ache in my stomach. Every so often a warm, sweet liquid slid down my throat, and the hunger pangs faded. But never for long. That terrible hunger always surged back, like fire. Occasionally there were snatches of awareness, the sensation of cool hands touching my face, the faint murmur of a male voice. At the back of my fevered brain, I was aware that I knew that voice, loved that voice. But then the hunger roared back and everything was lost. It could have been days, months, or even years before I finally cracked my eyes open. A corniced ceiling took shape above me, bright spots of light coalescing into a crystal chandelier. Pieces of memory filtered back into my battered brain. Belmort. I was lying tangled in black satin covers in a huge four-poster bed, and the walls around me were indigo blue, much darker than the pale gold bedroom I shared with Rue. Light from the chandelier winked off a pair of swords mounted on the wall. I knew this room. This was Edmund's bedroom. And standing by that bed was Edmund Dante himself, the vampire I'd fallen in love with. He looked like a dark angel, all coal black hair and ivory skin, eyes glittering like diamonds. And the breath would have caught in my lungs at the sheer beauty of him. But I no longer needed to breathe. I touched my throat, then pressed my palm to my chest. No heartbeat. Memories rushed back, making me real. June's escape from the West Wing, the attack on Belmort, my final attempt to help her, which had ended with her plunging a knife into my chest and... Etienne, I gasped. My lungs felt rusty and my lips were dry. The vampire who had pretended to be my friend, who'd helped me find the truth about June, only to reveal that he was the one who'd killed her and turned her into a monster. Edmund slid onto the bed next to me, as graceful and as fluid as a cat. Hush, mon ange. Don't worry about that now. I recoiled from him instinctively, and Edmund went very still. Emotion roared in my head, making it hard to think. I was dead.